Hey guys, welcome back to Jason and Johnny Build. So uh, we're in the shop today working on a Kawasaki Mule 4010 uh, diesel. And I have a 3010 diesel that I had a lot of trouble with overheating. And uh, so I learned a lot working on it. I couldn't find a whole lot of videos. I had a lot of people talk about it. They really didn't show what they did to fix it. I learned a lot and feel like maybe I could share some of that knowledge with you guys because this is a friend of mine uh, and his is doing the same thing mine was overheating blowing the water out of it uh, he tried doing all your typical raise it up try to purge the air out of the system uh, so anyways uh, head gasket cracked head or either stuck thermostat something like that but we're going to dive into it and see what we find and uh, just kind of go through it step by step so if you're having the same trouble maybe this will help you out all right, so what we have here is the Daihatsu diesel, and uh, I believe Briggs and Stratton might even sell these now under the Vanguard name. But uh, anyways, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, probably first, I'm, I just wanna re remove the thermostat. We'll see what it looks like. And then from there, uh, I'm not gonna stop there. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the head and show you what I found to be an easier way of doing it. And uh, so you don't have to remove too much you can leave a lot of this stuff still connected so let's go ahead and get a 10 millimeter and the nut driver here and get this removed let's take a look at the thermostat we'll see how much water this thing has in it he says he didn't feel like it has any because he said he kept blowing it out and it kept overheating and he was just kind of fed up with it Tell you what, we definitely flush his. We're gonna have to flush that radiator because it was just rust in there. There's a little screw right here holding this thermostat in. Mine did not have that. So, that's kind of strange. So, so don't, rem <laughs> don't forget to pull that screw out. Yeah, that come out much easier. Kind of nasty. Mine actually had compromised and mine was bent like an elbow it's like it was so i know that it was stuck all right so we're going to pursue removing the head so what i'm going to do is just go ahead and get the this intake boot off oh, that was loose underneath it. It's funny the difference is on the 3010 and the 4010 because the mine did not have this. Mine actually has two radiators. This one only has one. I can't see what that is. It feels like a Phillips. It is. Okay. It's right here, Johnny. I don't know if you can see it. Right there. So let's get that removed. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove my injectors. Uh, not the injector, but basically the feeder lines. sure they're loose in a way. We're gonna have to remove bolt from the head. It's basically where your the engine support here. There's a 12 millimeter bolt right behind your dipstick. Get this removed 
then we'll get this uh, bolt back here. I'll get Johnny to show you in just a second. So what we're about to remove is this 12, mil 12 millimeter bolt here on your dipstick, and then right behind here on your mount, it'd be not these two, but the one below it. We need to get it removed because it's actually in the head. What I did is I bent the, the dipstick back just a little bit so I could get to this bolt. Now, what I want to do is remove the four bolts on the exhaust manifold here. Not the bolts going into the head, just the ones to the manifold. That goes to your exhaust pipe and goes to the muffler. And I'm going to put a little PB blaster on each one just to make sure that we don't have a problem. Guys, uh, I've got the bolts off, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just kind of hand tighten these back up. I kind of got ahead of myself. What I want to do is blow this off, make sure there's no debris. I, I, I just don't want, we don't want to have any dirt or anything end up around or in our injectors. Because when we pull this off in a minute, uh, you're exposing the engine, so I'm just gonna blow any sand or anything that's loose up here. I should have did that when I started. I'm just I kind of got ahead of myself. All right, so I can loosen these back up. So now we need to get to the glow plugs. Basically all we're gonna do is just unhook the, the power to the glow plugs. This would be a good time to tell you to make sure your battery is disconnected. This mule's got a, um, a ground separator on it like an interrupt so we've got it flipped don't have to worry about that right now right, next remove this you don't have to take all of them off just the one with a main lead This is just a crossover link that makes all three of them burn at the same time. So I think before I expose the head, I need to go ahead and get the belt cover off and get the, um, the belt off the water pump and it can be kind of a booger. So that'll be our, our next task here. So these things vibrate like crazy and mine was also kind of, they had a piece of wood wedged in on mine and he had like a, uh, a zip tie holding it together because it's actually this ears broke off just from vibration i'll weld that back together for him before we put it all back together but for now we just need to start getting this upper guard off and then we'll just keep removing getting all the guards out of the way yeah. my mule was a a military surplus let's say military surplus it was used in the military and it got retired and I bought it and it's got 5,000 hours on it. But it runs like a champ now. It didn't when we got it. But I think this mule is, it's got 1,996 hours on it. Yeah, I think, yeah there's four of these 10 millimeter screws that hold this thing on. For you guys that are new to us, we're in Alabama and it is hot and humid. And we can't run the fan because uh, <laughs> it'll make too much noise on the video. So we're just struggling through it. So you see me pour sweat the whole time.
All right. <laughs> so I had to get the the rest of the air intake hose and the radiator uh, pipe. It's not a radiator hose, it's a radiator pipe. But anyways, the, the line that goes down to your other flex line. That's stupid. You just had to move all that stuff out of the way so you can get that yeah. off. <laughs> that's right. We're just, gonna you sim call it. We're just gonna simplify it. Yeah. Might not call it all by the right names, but right now I don't really care. That's okay, y'all saw what it looked like. You get the gist. So you gotta hold your mouth just right to get Oh, that's no good. Look at that. That's why his, that's another reason why he's probably overheating. It's the belt isn't isn't tight. But this far, we're gonna keep going. But that's definitely not good. So there's four bolts, four 10 millimeter bolts that hold your fan on. And I'm just gonna Reach in and hold the fan. Please, please. You know, it's strange. This this may be a very common problem too, because my uh, my uh, mule was the same way. The belt wasn't tight. It was actually missing the bolt that holds the alternator and the belt tight, and so. That was part of what they had that stick in there for, <laughs> kind of holding it tight, but it wasn't tight enough to, to do what it was supposed to. So that's, this is another good thing to watch out for on your mule. All right, so basically those four. We have a 10 millimeter here, and then we have to take the bolt loose that holds the alternator tight so we can remove this shroud. Maybe not, that's good. So that's as far as we need to go. But that that belt looks bad. You can tell it's it's been slipping a long time. So we'll get him a new belt. Okay, so we need to remove this 12 millimeter bolt here. It's your alternator bracket, and then remove our lower hose. Guys, this spring right here, I don't know that this that's factory or not. It looks like somebody is kind of overriding the governor just a little bit. You can tell me in the comments if it was. I just kind of don't believe it is. But anyways, it needs to come off. I'm just gonna let it hang. See that. We'll have to remove this. Now we want to remove the valve cover here. All right, so now what we want to do is remove our rocker arm assembly. So basically it's these three bolts. Go ahead and take these off because I sure don't want these to bounce down and fall in the engine. All right, guys, here's a, a, a little tip. Go ahead and remove these off of your valves because when you pull your head out, you don't want these bouncing across the floor because you'll never find them. So just remove all six of them. And then you can, I'm gonna remove my push rods. They're the same, but I'm gonna go ahead and just lay them out how they came out. So they go back, with the, back in the same spot.
I just have a clean place I can lay all this stuff and that way I could keep it all together. So just get you some paper or newspaper or something just so you can lay all these out. All right, so I forgot you do have to loosen this one up because your socket won't get into this bolt that holds the head down, the head bolt there. So if you just remove it, kind of back it out about a quarter to a half of an inch, should be, should be plenty of room. All right, head bolts. All of them have to come out. All right, so I just had to break them all. These these things are like 28 foot-pounds torque, and that felt like a lot more than 28 foot-pounds. See if we can pop the head loose. There it goes. Do that, and then we need to see if we can get the exhaust to pop loose with it. Okay, so kind of. I can see we're free here. There's not a, a real easy way to do this. Kind of just kind of get these out of your way just a little bit. It doesn't take much. Diesel return line. I'm human, guys. Okay. The first thing we want to do is look at this at this head gasket. Okay. Make sure we. I wipe some of this chunky stuff away. Well, guys, I don't see a definitive cut on the head gasket, but on mine, honestly, I couldn't either. But it it was getting it, and it was blowing by. Usually, you'll see a little. It's it's just a small little crack between it and the and the water between it and the cylinder. Let's look at the head. Okay, I'm gonna clean the head off. Okay guys, so uh, looking at the head gasket, if you see right in here, that right there is, uh, that's compromised basically from there to the water jacket. So back it up just a little bit. They can see the shiny spot. What it is, there's like a little bit of gasket material there on it that, that, that comes on this head gasket. Well, that's blown away. And you can tell it's nice and shiny. So we're going to put a new head gasket on it and we're going to go look at the head now. I went ahead and brushed the head and we can make sure that the head doesn't have a crack in it because uh, these are prone to crack. So we're, we're looking. I don't see any, any cracks near the water jacket. The head isn't cracked between the valves. I've seen one before where they actually split here. They get so hot. But everything else looks really good. Sometimes you can look and you can actually see the trail where the water was going. 
but uh, like I said, it doesn't take much for these things to give trouble. And we know it had an issue with the belt not being tight. So I'm gonna clean the head up real good in my vat. We're gonna order a belt for it. We're gonna get a head gasket, a thermostat, and uh, these other gaskets that we'll need. Go ahead and order a exhaust gasket for the front. And your the valve cover, the inspection gasket is a rubber, like an O-ring, so I believe it's gonna be okay. I believe that'll be all we need, and we'll give it a shot. So we'll be back. It'll be a different day, so we have to get these parts ordered.